As part of LO3 for R081, you need to know about image file formats, about file formats for video and file formats for audio. So looking at the um, specification, you can see that it just says that you need to know the properties and the limitations of file formats for still images. Um, so with that in mind, because it doesn't list them, I've just took the list of file formats from R082, which is the digital graphics unit. Digital graphics is a core unit, which everyone should have to study um, if they're going for um, any of the levels qualifications. Um, so this is the one you're probably going to have more knowledge of than any of the others. So the file formats are listed here from R082 and there are six that you need to know about. The first one is a JPEG. Okay, um, I've included the sources at the bottom of each slide, although there are plenty of other sources to look at. Um, a JPEG file then is a lossy file format. It's seen as being um, a low quality file format, according to some people, um, because when it's saved, it is compressed. And that means that um, anything useless, according to the program you're using, um, is gotten rid of. So it can lead to some problems um, when you print. And so that, that refers to colour loss. Um, there's limitless colours available. Um, it means that anything that you take, if you take a photograph, for example, and it's saved as a JPEG, it'll capture all of those individual um, little nuances in colour. I've previously said that some people see it as low quality, but really it is quite a high quality format because with the naked eye, you're not that likely to see the differences in colour, although it can happen. So just be aware that it's not the best quality. It is suitable for print use. Um, but like I said, some people can see that little bit of difference, so it's better used on the web. Um, a JPEG is a really good file format for web use because it's relatively small um, and it will download at a reasonable speed. Um, it's not the best, but it is standard and it is used a lot. Um, it can't be used for animation, so it's always for a still image file format. Um, and you'll probably be aware of it from using a digital camera. Um, if you take a photograph on your camera, it's often saved on your memory card as a, um, a JPEG file. So it is one that people are quite familiar with um, and it is often people's stock answer. The next one that um, I'm going to talk about is a TIFF file format. It's a lossless file format with limited compression. Sometimes it's not compressed at all and it can contain layers. Um, in Photoshop, you can often save it as a TIFF file without layers, um, which does reduce the file size because they are big files. It's best for print purposes. You absolutely can't use it on the web. It's a massive file format by comparison to something like a JPEG. Um, that means that when you're downloading, it's going to take forever um, and with a, a poor broadband connection or um, on a mobile phone, for example, it's going to take a long time or use a lot of somebody's data. So it's just not suitable. It's not one you'd use at all. It's got millions of colours available. Um, it's really clear. Um, and it's interchangeable with a PSD file um, because it's not a software specific. It has those layers. A PSD file comes from Photoshop. So if you wanted to stop using Photoshop and use some other program, a TIFF is a good one to use. It is standard in the print publishing industry. Um, for example, if you were going to um, produce a graphic for use um, as a poster, it would be often saved as a TIFF because it's such a high quality. But like a JPEG, it doesn't support transparency. So if, you're, um, if you've got a small um, logo, for example, it wouldn't really be best to save that as a TIFF because you'd end up with that white background. So if you put it onto a website, you'd still have that white background. 
Another format that you're going to be less familiar with probably is a BMP file format. It's a lossless file format again, um, and it's suitable for print purposes. It is reasonably large and again has millions of colours. Now, like I said, this isn't something that you're going to be that familiar with because it was originally just for a Windows file um, program and for that reason it is seen as historic but it's now used on all platforms. GIF or GIF, depending on how you say it, um, is the next one. It's again a lossless file format and it's suitable for animations as well as um, still images. It is the most widely used one for an animation online. It's limited very much to 256 colours and that's standard. You can't add any more colours than that. It makes it slightly less useful in certain situations, but it supports transparency of layers. Commonly used um, for logos because of that. You can you can create your logo using simple colours, um, which is what a logo should be. It shouldn't be overly complex. What you want is going to be within those 256. Um, but because of the transparency, it means that you can have nice sharp edges and you can have a logo created on a canvas. And when you save it as a GIF or GIF, um, that background will show up so it blends nicely and it's best used on the web. Um, again, like I say, it's, it's for simple things. So if you're doing the website unit, you might consider saving your um, buttons as a GIF or your um, logo because of that transparency. And it's great if you want to change and merge different parts together. So if you're creating, for example, a digital graphic, but you have got um, something that already has that background layer on and you want to get rid of that, if you get rid of it and then save it as a GIF before importing it onto your final product. PNG was used originally as a lossless file format and it was supposed to take over from the GIF. It compresses well and it has millions of colours, so that's how it's moved on from a GIF. The original, older version of PNG did only have 256 as well, but they've moved that file format on. And it's likely that this file format's gonna become the one that everybody uses as standard on the web rather than a GIF. It's only really used for online, um, and it's not compatible with older versions of certain applications, including Internet Explorer. I think it's from six downwards. It's unlikely that that's really going to be an issue um, in 2016. It again has a transparency, um, so it's good for things like logos, but it's not suitable for digital photos. It's just, it's not the standard that you'd use. You're better off with something like a TIFF or a JPEG. PDF is the one that sometimes confuses people. Um, most people have seen a PDF as a text document, but it can actually be used to save images. If you think of something like um, a flyer for an event created in Photoshop, you can then turn that into a PDF for sharing. It's a multi-purpose file, so like I say, it could be an image, it could be text-based, it could be a mixture of both, um, and it is one that people forget. It's a compressed file, and it eliminates some of the disadvantages of JPEG. So for example, if you have created a flyer, if you save it as a JPEG, it's still a reasonably large file um, that's lossless, uh, lossy, sorry. The PDF reduces that file size, so it, it helps for sharing um, and it, it maintains consistency from device to device. So whereas some other file formats might have a bit of an issue, a PDF doesn't. Another thing that you might find with a PDF is that it's good to be emailed. So like a flyer, if you want to share that between different members of staff or departments or organisations, 
it's a good one to use because it will attach to a file format uh, to an email sorry it does require additional software to be installed though people need a pdf reader and that can cause you some problems although generally everybody does have a pdf reader and they are free to download that's just a brief summary um, i've summarized it including the source there um, just to help you get an idea of how each file format works I've included whether it has layers, transparency, loss, whether it's lossless or lossy. Um, so JPEG is lossy because it gets rid of data it doesn't feel it needs, where it's useful, and then the colour range as well. These questions um, are based on image file formats um, and they are from the January 2015 paper. Um, the scenario is all about um, a youth centre. Um, and it says youth has been given a sketch of a new logo. The logo will be used on the website and other documents. Um, the digital version of the logo is to be created in a PNG file format. So it tells you one image file format. First question is explain one reason why a PNG is suitable for this type of image. It's worth two marks and that's the important thing here. It's one reason, but it's two marks. So you need an explanation with an expansion. So if we take a little look at the mark scheme here, um, you've got three sort of options. They're not the only options, but they are um, they are three good ones. So PNG format retains transparency, one mark, so that it can be used on various background colours easily. Second mark. That means that basically you're saying you can merge it onto a website um, or they're small in size so they can be downloaded quickly because here you're thinking about why that logo has been created. It's going on a website, a website needs to be downloaded. And the final option is it's supported by web browsers and they're copyright free. Probably less common answer the last one but the other two are very common and um, in the guidance it says it's high quality it's just enough it's just not enough um, most file formats are high quality so you're not showing any lot uh, any knowledge there if we go to the examiner report it was said that this was answered poorly by a lot of candidates because all they said was it's high quality um, and it just shows a lack of understanding about digital images. Um, and the key with this question is that you know the purpose of each file format for its context. So a PNG being quick to download and because it's on a website or it's having a transparent background so that it looks professional. So looking back again, um, question 4B went on further the website will include other images of the facilities and the activities at youth these images need to be saved for use on a website so it's given you the context there images for a website explain one issue that needs to be considered when deciding what format to use for these images you can see that that's then worth three marks um, so here what you need to have is a, a reason and then expanding it but with two expansions um, so you could say the file size of the graphic one because you're saying what the issue is the file size um, as they need to be downloaded and they if they are too lo uh, large they'll take a long time to download so you've said what the issue is and then expanded on that or the quality of the graphic needs to be high enough so here you, talk, you can talk about quality so that it will not be blurry and portray a bad view of the website because we all know if we look at a website and the images are blurry we think it's poor so you've got the issue there if it being high enough quality because if it's not it would be blurry and that would be bad if all you did was write you need to think about the file size of the graphic and the quality of the graphic that will get you two marks 
because you've got no expansion. If you give another issue, you wouldn't get the third mark because it's got to have the expansion. Again, the examiner's report suggests that it was poorly answered. Um, and that's because you're not reading the context, which is web-based, um, or fully explaining how the final product affects it. Um, this is a vocational paper. Think in context. Identify a suitable file format. That's the um, last question in this. Other than a PNG for these images to be saved. OK, so suitable file formats, but not a PNG. OK, so JPEG, PICT and GIF, they're suitable. Again, that's an EG list, so there might be others. Um, but don't accept BMP, EPS, PSD or TIFF as they are too large. So not suitable for web use. All right. Um, again, it's about the context and understanding the context. The examiner said that this was well answered. But people still wrote PNG. It's in the question. It says other than. So be careful to read the full um, question and be careful to answer in context. Because if you didn't write um, a, a JPEG and you wrote a TIFF, a TIFF is too big, so it's not suitable for print. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I did just take um, the ones that are in R082. But there are others like PSD, which is a Photoshop file format and possibly one that's quite common here if you've used Photoshop in R082 digital graphics. There's absolutely no harm in researching other file formats, but be careful because a lot of information out there is very technical. Some good sources of information are on this slide. So as I've said before, you've got um, the OCR website, which does have lesson elements. They're good for revision um, and some past papers as well as um, some where it's got the question, the mark scheme and the feedback. Or you might have to look at those on separate documents. Slideshare's got some useful stuff on. And as always, my YouTube channel um, will help you. There's videos on there um, other than the ones I've created.